Let's paint a touch of spring with some alcohol inks. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. It is cold and gray winter where I am, and I'm already dreaming of spring. There's a crabapple tree in my yard that I love seeing in bloom, so I'm basing this branch from that. I'm lightly penciling in where I think I want everything. My substrate is graphic, so opaque white plastic, because I'm going to want to easily go back down to the white during this painting, and graphics won't stain like many other surfaces. I'm planning on adding a bird to this piece because I just love them, so I'm drawing him in too. I'll make him a bit darker than I usually would, just to make it easy for you to see. For my background, I'm using Kilty Harvest and Forest Green. I'm going for a parchment paper-like background, which I get by flooding the surface with isopropyl alcohol, soaking a foam pad with the alcohol also, and then adding my inks to randomly stamp in those colors until the surface is covered the way I want. Doing it this way gives me a mottled but um, soft background. But any background you put down is fine. The goal is just something that's not too pale, and you'll see why that's important in a bit. Once the ink has dried, I decide to reshape the edges a bit, and that's easy to do by tilting the paper up and then just dripping alcohol to mark off where I'd like my new edge. So I'm kind of drawing a line with my alcohol bottle and then letting that alcohol drip onto some tissue paper or paper towel. Then I tilt off the alcohol that collects at the bottom of my piece of graphics, and then I can easily wipe away any ink that I don't want. I then carefully clear away any ink from the bird too, first with a piece of tissue and then a cotton swab, otherwise known as a Q-tip, <laughs> which is what I'll probably be calling it more likely because cotton swab is just not something I tend to say. <laughs> now, I could have just masked off the bird with like um, masking fluid or a piece of contact paper that I'd cut out, but honestly, this is faster. Next, also with a Q-tip, <laughs> I wipe away ink in the shape of flowers and buds. Since these blooms are going to be white, I needed the background to be dark enough for them to show up against the background. So if it was too light and I had white flowers, you'd barely see them. I position these flowers somewhat randomly, but close to where the branch is going to go. I want to keep this airy looking, so I'm not going to put in a lot of blooms like there ordinarily would be, just a few to, like I said, keep this painting a little bit airy. I am, however, going to add a larger bloom at the top of the painting to keep that space from looking too empty, and also to suggest that it's closer to us than everything else in the painting. Okay, now for the best part, color. <laughs> I'm starting with pinata pink for the bright, really new buds. Now this pink is sort of a hot pink, but mixed with the touch of that greeny yellow background that it's grabbing and mixing in as I paint it in, it's really gonna turn into the perfect color. I'm using a Filbert paintbrush for this because the rounded end is perfect for the shape of the buds. Now, if you're not familiar with paintbrush names, a filbert is just the name for this shape of brush. So like any brand of brush that you go buy, there would be a filbert in the collection. 
I'm pretty sure that it's named after a nut, which I think is a hazelnut, maybe? Okay, that's your piece of useless trivia for the day. <laughs> Again, I'm being a little random about where these little buds go, but I'm keeping them grouped in small clusters like they would be on the tree. I've pulled out pinata lime green to put in some leaves. Some, just some simple basic leaf shapes near each cluster of flowers and buds. Just a few for now. I'll probably add more as the painting develops. Now with pinata burrow brown, I start to work on the branch. To be fair, <laughs> The tree is actually more gray than brown, but I want more color, so brown it is. <laughs> I paint the upper part a bit lighter to help give the branch a sense of dimension, but I left the area under the bird fully dark to account for the little fella's shadow on the branch. With the branch put in, I can add all the very thin stems holding the buds and leaves. For this, I'm using a thin liner, or you could also use a small round brush. And I'm making sure it's only damp with ink and not soaking wet, so that when I draw the lines, they don't bloom and spread and become wider than I want. I also added some Kielty Harvest to the Pinata Lime Green to give it a different color. I add in some more interest at the top, a couple of leaves, and some pink buds. Next step, adding some dimension to the flowers. To keep this step fairly simple, I just thinned Kielty's gray ink with a bunch of alcohol. Around, I'm gonna say one drop of ink to maybe 20 drops of alcohol, or maybe it could have been 25 drops of alcohol. I just need a hint of gray. And I'm adding contours to the petals and the white buds. Now I'm super careful again to not let my brush be too wet so that the gray doesn't get away from me and bloom all over the place. So I'm using a very short haired little brush. In this case, I'm using a three millimeter angle brush, but any tiny brush can work for this. Now remember, nothing has to be perfect. We're not going for photorealism, at least I'm not. I'm just kind of going for, you know, the look that we would expect a flower to have. What's really cool about painting nature is it's pretty forgiving. Your eye is going to see white blobs near a branch as flowers <laughs> and green ones as leaves. So have fun with this. Don't make yourself crazy trying to make perfect shapes. When that's all done, I'm going to tackle the center of these blooms. For this, I lightened my green again with a couple more drops of Kielty Harvest. With my liner, I'm painting in the stamens of the flower with quick, short flicking motions. I'm aiming for a bit of a starburst look. Now I'm taking creative license again <laughs> by making them green because they're really more like a white color, like you can see here, but I want them to pop in the painting, so I'm going for a green. It'll be our secret, just don't tell anyone. <laughs> then to top them off, I'm using a micro brush and pinata golden yellow. I dab that brush into the ink bottle and then I make sure to kind of dab it off on a piece of tissue to minimize the amount of ink on the brush 
and then I dot the end of each stamen with the yellow. And how cute is that? I love how these turned out. And with that, my branch is done. And all we've got left to paint is the bird. I've decided to go with a blue bird. They're native to my area, but sadly, I have never seen one in my yard. So I'll paint one. <laughs> The sapphire blue ink has a tinge of aqua to it, so you saw me add a drop of pink to it to get it to be more of a true blue. I paint the head and wings and tail, and I make the tail a bit darker since it's in the shadow. For the chest, I mix a little orange and brown to get the color that I want for that. And then I put that in. Then for the white belly, I use gray to add shadows and contours. Using black ink, I paint in the beak. I darken the head of our bird and then using a damp with alcohol micro brush, I add in that fluffy nature of little white feathers around the neck of the bird. Next, I start adding some texture to the chest to make life much easier. I used an ultra fine Sharpie to color in the eye and the feet. I pulled out my trusty dull X-Acto blade to scratch in the highlights in and around the eye. Because you guys know I love scratching at my paintings. <laughs> then I go to town <laughs> scratching in the smooth feathers. Smooth feathers. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> scratching in the smooth feathers of the chest. Now I get asked a lot what I use to do my scratching and it's just an X-Acto blade that I dulled down with a nail file. There are tools that are meant for scratch art and they kind of look like this one. Um, and they work really well too. But honestly, you're bound to have something around the house that can do the job. So you don't need to run out and buy something. I think our little bluebird is done. I kind of love how this turned out. Let me know in the comments what you think. Give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more projects like it. And if you make one too, come show it off in my Facebook group. I would love to see it. Oh, and tell me what bird you would paint in the comments too. Thank you to my patrons who make this channel possible. And thanks to those of you who kindly help out by clicking on my links before doing any shopping. As always, links for everything I used are in the description box below. I'm really happy you spent some time with me today. Let your creative natures shine. See you soon. Bye now.